Hey guys, welcome back. This is Tier 1 Concealed. My name is Aaron and today we are going to be talking about appendix carrying. Specifically, how do you do that? Well, first you're going to need a holster. Ideally, a holster designed specifically for appendix carry. Very conveniently here at Tier 1 Concealed, we make a few appendix inside the waistband specific holsters. Today we are going to be highlighting a lot of features that are common amongst all of our inside the waistband holsters, but specifically our Axis Elite holster. When you order a holster from us, you will receive it in the mail in a box and you will open the box to find a nice drawstring bag. Inside the bag, you can open it up and find your holster. This holster in particular is the Axis Elite in Tiffany Blue, built for a Glock 34 length OZ9. So when you get your holster, you will wanna take a look at it, make sure it is the correct holster, the correct height, the correct dominant hand, and all everything's correct for your order. If you find any mistakes or if there are any errors, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. You can call us and reach out to customer service. Our phone number is 385-205-6005, or you can give us an email at support at tier1concealed.com and we will get you taken care of as soon as possible. Also, don't hesitate to reach out to any of our social media accounts, whether that's on Facebook, Instagram, or here on YouTube. We monitor the messages and the comments and we will try to get you taken care of as soon as possible. So check out your holster. And one of the first things you should do is just double check, make sure it fits your firearm and that is no issue there. So quickly check, make sure this is a safe gun, check the fit and it looks like it fits very well. Also check if this applies to you um, with a spare magazine carrier, check that, check that the height is how you intend it to be. Once you have that all taken care of, you'll, you'll want to take a look at the belt clips, the concealment claw here, as well as the shock cord and, and the, the retention screws. You will find multiple retention screws, for one for the magazine carrier and another one. Well, there are three that can affect retention here, but one specifically for the gun side of the holster. You want to figure out how you want to carry your holster and how you want it to sit in your belt line. This one step is going to either make or break the carrying experience, especially in the appendix position. You want to find that perfect ride height so that the holster is sitting on your belt line in a comfortable position, but you don't only want it to be comfortable. You want to be able to access that firearm consistently and efficiently. So that largely depends on the height of the belt clips themselves, as well as the concealment claw. So you'll notice we have four screws, two on each belt clip. And if you loosen those just a little bit, you can slide the belt clips up or down, depending on your preference. A uh, quick tip on that, if you move the belt clips down on the holster, that will cause the gun to sit higher on your waist or on your, on your belt line. The higher the firearm is, the more potential it has to cause printing, but also the more accessible it is. So conversely, if you were to slide the belt clips up on the holster, that will cause the gun to sit deeper inside your pants on that belt line, therefore potentially being more concealable. However, a little bit more difficult to get a good consistent grip and purchase on the, the gun when you need to draw it. So mess around with that and figure out that perfect ride height for you. For me personally, when I get my holsters, I like to loosen up those screws and slide the belt clips down a couple notches so that the gun sits a little bit higher. And another good tip is to make sure this concealment claw sits level with the belt or the belt clips. What this concealment claw will do is it will push against the inside of your belt. And if your belt is rigid enough, it will cause uh, added concealment with the grip of that firearm by pushing it away from the belt into your body. So once those things are figured out and you are happy with it, feel free to back the screws out, throw a little bit of Loctite on there, crank them down and set them in your desired setting and you should be good to go there. 
We do offer Loctite as an add-on to, um, to our holster orders, and we sell it just as a standalone item under our accessories, I believe. But it will look like this, something like this, some blue Loctite, some blue thread locker, whatever brand you wanna use, you probably have some of this laying around at home somewhere. It's always a good idea to ensure those screws are not going to back out when you're carrying, especially if you are using your holster a lot, taking it to the range, doing some dry fire, just messing around with it. Uh, occasionally a screw might back out a little bit you definitely don't want to be losing any of those screws and affect the functionality of your holster so always a good idea to do that and this goes without saying but with everything related to concealed carry and appendix carry and holsters and things like that you are going to have to experiment you're gonna to have to try out a few different things and figure out what works best for you these are just uh, tips and tricks, some uh, good ideas of things that we've found that work well for us, but it's not one size fits all. So you're gonna have to put some, you're gonna have to put in the leg work yourself and just try to figure it out as best you can. So once you have the ride height and the concealment claw and belt clips and everything set just how you like it, it's always a good idea to double check the level of retention on the holster with the actual firearm that you're going to be using in the holster. So let's take this OZ9 and check real quick and see if that is an adequate level of retention that I want. Keep in mind when you're testing it outside of the holster, there might not be quite as much resistance as there will be when you're wearing it with the added pressure of your pants, waistband, and your belt, especially if you like to wear a tight belt. So keep that in mind. It's always good to check the retention with the holster in your belt, but just for the sake of showing this in the video, I will do it right here. Uh, it feels a little loose, a little loose, but I don't want it to be super tight because if I need to draw it really quickly, I don't want an extreme amount of resistance to try to uh, get that holster or get that gun out of the holster. Um, I want a fairly smooth draw, but not something so loose that it might fall down if I do a little hop, a little jump or anything. You wanna, you wanna make sure that it stays secured in there as well as the spare magazine if that is applicable to you. Should you need to adjust the retention, as I mentioned before, there are two screws. The screw for the spare magazine carrier will be on the backside of that part of the holster and you can simply tighten or loosen that screw if you want the the spare mag to come out a little bit more easily or have a little bit more resistance on there and the same goes for the firearm itself the main re retention adjustment screw is on the back side just below the trigger guard there so in this case i think i want to tighten it just a hair and as always experiment and test it out after you adjust any of these settings. Throw it on and make sure everything's clear. There's no ammo in the gun or in the magazines and maybe do some dry fire and make sure that is exactly how you like it. And once you do, once you finish that, uh, you should be good to go on the holster there. The next order of business is figuring out where exactly you want to place this holster. If it is an appendix specific holster, you're definitely going to want to have it on the front of your body. But that, that precise positioning can be different for different people. For me personally, I like to have the slide and the longest area of the holster right in my midline in line with my belly button and my zipper basically. That way I feel like it is most evenly positioned between my legs, should I be sitting or taking strides or running or anything like that. I feel like it is most even that way. Some people like to imagine this is your belt and you're wearing it. Some people like to have it offset just a little bit to the left or the right and it is totally user preference, whatever feels more natural and more comfortable for them. So I like mine right in the middle. Some people will have their holster maybe canted a little bit, favoring their right side. Um, typically, if they're right-handed, you don't see this a lot if they're left-handed and vice versa if they're right-handed. But mess around with it, figure out what you like, 
And also this will be a good opportunity to check with your normal wardrobe if there's any super obvious printing. So let's talk about that next. Okay, so when we talk about printing, that basically means what we're referring to is some part of the gun or holster uh, making itself known or visible uh, when your shirt is over it. It'll cause a uh, shape, it will cause uh, some, some part of that to poke out. And it'll be obvious when you look at it that, oh, there's something under your shirt that's causing that protrusion. Uh, you don't really want that. However, a small amount of printing will go unnoticed most of the time. A lot of people, when especially when we're new to concealed carry, we will put that gun on and we'll go out in public and we will become very paranoid, very anxious, and we'll look around at everybody and we think that everybody is watching our every move and we'll see somebody glance at us and we'll wonder if they, if they know we have a gun on us. Um, we'll think all these things. But the reality of it is most people probably aren't paying very close attention to you, especially if you are dressed fairly normal and you don't, you don't do anything to really stand out. Even if you do, they're probably not gonna be looking in this region and trying to figure out if you're hiding something down there. They might be, you know, there's some weird people out there, but printing usually isn't that big of an issue if you follow just some simple steps. One of the biggest things that can help uh, conceal the gun and holster on you is a good belt. So on our website, we offer two belts and we've uh, filmed a few videos on these. So if you want a more of a deep dive on those, uh, check out our description below and I will post a link to those videos. But the two belts we offer, one is the core tier one concealed EDC belt and the other one is the EDC S belt. Now these these belts have a couple things in common, but they're both very different. The EDC, EDC S belt has two sections of the belt. Uh, the front section where you carry the gun is a very rigid, uh, sturdy section of the belt. And that helps uh, work in conjunction with the features of the holster that cause concealment. Uh, the concealment claw and the concealment ridge kind of pull the gun to mold to your body shape. And that's why we have this flexible hinge point that is a, a multi-axis flex. So it can flex in, in a multiple axis, axes and cause concealment there. The back half of the EDCS belt is is a stretchy elastic material. So this is a very comfortable belt and is a good option for people that really uh, seek that comfort level. Um, and even people with hip or back issues um, where a, a rigid belt might cause them a lot of back pain. So this is kind of a two piece belt and it's a uh, very easily adjustable and it's, it's a great design. It's a good belt. Uh, the core T1C EDC belt is fully rigid and it is very rigid. It is a super sturdy design and this belt is great for concealed carry, especially if you have a heavy setup or you wanna carry multiple things on the belt. Uh, this can work for inside the waistband stuff as well as outside the waistband. You can throw mag carriers on there with an OWB rig if you want and it is very sturdy and it will hold up for that. Another cool feature of this belt is its ratchet system. So if you look on the inside of this belt, it has this track system with, I think like quarter inch uh, adjustment increments. So it's very adjustable, very quick and easily, and the belt can come off and on very quickly. It's, it's pretty convenient, um, but it might not be as comfortable for some users as the EDCS belt. So belts are huge uh, when it comes to concealment and mitigating printing in your firearm or your holster. Another thing that I want to talk about is the clothing that you wear. Uh, if you're wearing just a t-shirt like this, dark colors tend to conceal a little bit better and you don't tend to notice printing as much with darker colors. But something that's maybe even a little bit better at concealing is a shirt with a pattern on it, such as a flannel or a jacket or some sort of plaid uh, pattern. Those typically tend to hide printing in different shapes a little bit better. And combine those two if you get a dark colored 
plaid shirt, for example, that is a pretty easy to conceal combination. And in case you're wondering, Tier 1 Conceal does make a flannel shirt now. So check out our website. I will link that below. It is an awesome green and black flannel shirt that is kind of like a, it's, it's kind of a lightweight flannel, but it is great for transitional seasons, layering in the winter, or even summer in the cooler states. So check that out. So belts, shirts, your holster set up correctly, all that stuff can help uh, help in your carrying experience especially in the appendix position but there's one other thing i want to mention and that is your pants selection it's always uh beneficial in my opinion to have a pair of pants that has a little bit of give to them some stretch because especially if you're going to be moving around sitting and standing walking bending over kneeling down the stretch helps to mitigate different pinch points and hot spots that the holster might cause. I mean, you have to realize that you're carrying a firearm, and in this case, a spare magazine, in a holster inside your pants. So that's a lot of extra stuff that you need to, you need to get around when you're moving around. So a little bit of stretch goes a long ways. And this whole idea of comfort is a very, large topic we can go very in depth in that there's a lot of aspects just to life that you have to consider or reconsider when you decide to start carrying a firearm we have a whole video that we filmed a couple years ago um, on how to conceal carry comfortably and i will also link that one in the description below please check out that video it has a lot of good information on different tips and tricks on how to move around and, and go about your daily life while carrying concealed. So especially if you're new to this whole idea, please check that out. And now I want to take a quick minute just to jump into our website and our ordering process. Uh, if you are new to guns or new to concealed carry or new to appendix carry, or maybe you're not even new, but you aren't familiar with our website, it might be a little overwhelming um, when ordering your own holster my couple things might be a little bit confusing and we are working on making that more streamlined for you guys and making the ordering process much more simple but here are a couple um, a couple common questions that we get when you order a holster so first of all we want to cater to you guys we want you guys to be able to order a holster that is perfect for you and everything that you want, nothing that you don't want. So we have a lot of customization options on our website and you'll see that when you go to order. And that is for you guys. It's, it adds a little, a couple more steps in the ordering process, but at the end of the day, we want you to have exactly what you want. So a couple of our common questions, when, when you go to our website and look at holsters and you see our selection of holsters and you find the holster you want, you click on it, it'll most likely ask if you are right-handed or left-handed. Uh, let's, let's look at the Axis Elite holster on the website. It'll ask if you are right-handed or left-handed in the drop-down menu. Then you'll go to the next drop-down menu menu and it'll ask if uh it'll ask you for your gun make and model and we have a long list scroll through that find your specific gun make and model click that and then if applicable it will ask you if you have a weapon light we don't have weapon light options for every gun out there but we do have them for a lot so if you are carrying a weapon light on your firearm uh, that is where you will select that if there is no option for that, unfortunately, we do not make it at that time. We might in a different holster model, or you might need to look at a different holster like the MSP Pro Series holster, which is a universal holster based off the weapon light. But moving on, it'll then ask you for the color of holster you want. In this instant, this was instance, this was Tiffany blue. We have a lot of color options, so scroll through that. And if you don't know what a color is or a certain pattern looks like, scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and we will have a color swatch on the website where you can see every color and every pattern that we offer. And there's quite a few of them, so sometimes that is a tough decision to make. Next, you will be asked if you have a threaded barrel on your gun or not. And that option will 
do a couple things. So depending on the model of firearm you have, uh, the holster will either come open-ended to allow for that threaded barrel or it will be covered. So selecting a threaded barrel sometimes won't work if you have a compensator on that threaded barrel. Yes, you do have a threaded barrel, but it's, it's actually not just the threads that stick out. You have a, a compensator as well. So, so sometimes that won't fit in the holster. So if that's the case for you, don't select threaded barrel on that one. But if it's just the threaded barrel, click yes and move on to the next uh, drop down menu, which is belt clip style. So we have three options for belt clips on all of our IWB holsters. What you see here and in most of the content we produce is our easy adjust belt clip. This is a belt clip that we designed and it, it, and it features that kind of detent track system where you can loosen these screws and easily click the belt clips up or down depending on the ride height level that you want. Another option that we offer are the ulti clips. These are great options if you want to go super deep concealment and not have belt clips show like over a holster like if you're running with a tucked in shirt or something you don't want belt clips sticking out over your I mean not over your holster but over your belt these can actually clamp onto the fabric of your waistband underneath a belt or in lieu of a belt and then clamp down like this these work pretty good if you're running beltless or, or, or you need something for super deep concealment. And the other option we offer are discrete carry concepts clips. These ones are branded with our logo and these are also metal clips just like the Ulti clips. But these ones are designed to go over a belt and these are super robust and once you get it on the belt it's not really moving very much so a lot of people opt for these they are a little bit slimmer than our easy adjust clips they don't have quite as much adjustability as far as ride height goes but they are they are strong they are very secure that being said i've never seen or heard of any of our easy adjust belt clips failing or breaking or coming off a belt or anything like that even though they aren't made out of metal, they are still very strong, very robust. So keep that in mind. Those are your three options for belt clips. Select the one that you want and then move on to the next drop down menu. The next selection will ask you about your spare magazine if it's, if it's applicable, right? This uh, Axis Elite as well as the Aegis Elite and the MSP uh, uh, holsters will have spare magazine options for you, but the T1M, the Zyphos V2, and the Zyphos Elite won't come with a spare magazine carrier, so you won't see those options on that product listing. But it'll ask you if this, if, if you want your spare magazine carrier to be extended or not. What that means is this is an, an extended spare magazine for a Glock 17, right? So whatever is the standard uh, capa round capacity of the magazine that comes with your firearm. If you're carrying a magazine that carries more than that, that will most likely be an extended magazine or something like this that has a base pad to add a higher round capacity to the magazine. So for this particular holster, I selected yes because I wanted to carry one of these bigger magazines in there. So what that does is that makes this carrier a little bit deeper so that the top of the magazine sits more or less level with the top of the firearm as it's sitting in the holster. So you see it's pretty level between the grip and the slide and the uh, spare magazine. If I were to put a standard capacity magazine in that, like this 17 round Glock 17 magazine, you will notice it sits extra deep. So keep that in mind when ordering. If you want something that sits super deep, Remember, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to draw if you need to do a reload just because it's sitting so deep in there. But some people like that. Conversely, if you want something to ride a little bit higher, maybe you select the standard capacity spare magazine carrier, but still throw it, uh, uh, an extended magazine in there and it'll sit a little bit higher, maybe about at this level, more or less. That might cause more issues with printing. It might not. But one thing's for sure is it will be a lot more easily accessible if you need to reload. But for me personally, and I would say most people, they like to have the appropriate height 
with the magazine and their firearm. So that is what extended spare mag means on the website. Okay, so the next option you will be given is shock cord color. So this is only applicable to the Axis Elite holster and the Xiphos Elite holster and the MSP Pro Series. So this is your shock cord right here. So sometimes um, most people get black, but you can get a different color, any color we offer to add a nice little accent piece right there. So that is that option. And there's also another selection if you want additional shock cord. Some, sometimes people will pop the shock cord out and carry without the spare magazine carrier, which is totally reasonable. Uh, occasionally they will lose that shock cord or the shock cord will get overly worn out, which takes a while to do that, but it can happen. Or you just want to change color. So that's why we offer an additional selection there for extra shock cord. Then you will be asked about a wedge pack. A lot of people don't know what the wedges are, but this is another tool that can be tremendous for concealment as well as comfort. We have a, a specific video on the wedges that I will link below that you can go and watch and figure out what those are all about. But I have some right here just to show you real quickly. We have three different sizes. Uh, we, I should say three different series of wedges. These are standard ones. They're about an inch wide. They come in four sizes. We have wide wedges, which I'll show you. This is the individual wedge, not those four pushed together. But we also have the same four sizing extra large, large, medium, and small. These ones are 1.5 inches, so they're a little bit wider. Depending on the holster you have, these might be a better fit for that holster, uh, or if you're carrying a larger gun or something like that. And then this is these are just two of them, but we have super wide um, wedges that are two and a quarter inches wide. Super wide, these ones are great for light bearing holsters just like this holster. This is an Aegis Elite holster with a, a medium wide 2.5 inch wed, or, or sorry, 2.25 inch wedge on it. So what this does is this creates some padding. If there is a pokey area or a hot spot on the back of your holster that you kind of want to add some padding to when you wear it, make it a little bit more comfortable. But arguably the biggest benefit to these wedges is the ability to help in concealment. So you'll notice this is placed towards the bottom of the holster with the fat end at the bottom. So if you imagine the belt being here and the wedge being here, that is going to push away from your body and there will be a hinge point where the belt is. And so what does that do? Imagine if there were a, a wedge on this holster down here, it's gonna push away from your body and the grip of the gun, the top of the slide and the top of the spare magazine are going to push into your body a little bit more. And this creates a little bit better concealment. So the wedges are multifaceted. They can help with comfort and concealment. So give those a try if you are experiencing any sort of discomfort with the holster, or if you need a little bit more help with the concealment aspect of that. Again, these come in uh, four different sizes as well as three different thicknesses. So use your best judgment. You can buy them as a pack where you will get four of each thickness or four of each size in one thickness, or you can mix and match and maybe get one of one and, and one of another or whatever you want. The, those options are available as you build out your holster. And finally, you will come to an option where it asks about thread locker. So I touched on that briefly a little bit ago, but that is just a very small upcharge and you will get a small thing of thread locker. And this is always a good idea to have should you need it. And it'll look something like this and you can apply that just a little bit to the threads of the screws on your holster just to ensure that those are always going to stay in place and use it for whatever else you like. So that is the ordering process in a nutshell. Hopefully all of that made sense to you. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you have any uh, questions, feel free to reach out to customer service. You have, if you have any issues with your holster itself uh, or anything like that, 
feel free to reach out to us here on social media, here on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook, and we will answer your comments and get back to your messages as soon as we can. We appreciate you guys a lot, and this is just a quick look at how to appendix carry, but we think with these tips and tricks and a little bit more knowledge, you can be a little bit more successful more quickly in your journey to appendix carrying and doing that successfully and comfortably. And we know most of you probably are not subscribed and most of you probably won't subscribe even though I'm asking you to, but you have this opportunity to prove me wrong. So go ahead, do that if you feel like it and uh, let us know as always what you'd like to see next. Stay safe, stay strapped out there and we will catch you next time.